Hey Design Squad, welcome back. And in this video, I'm gonna answer one of your questions uh, from our friend Ali. And he's saying, hey, how do you paginate repeater? And it's really, really simple. If you worked with repeaters before, you know how extensive a list can get. Let's say if you would have 24 items with the same template repeated across uh, different objects, then you might end up with like a really big list and you might want to paginate it as long as it makes sense to your users. And so there are a couple of built-in functionalities in Axure. Before we jump into them, I would recommend for those who are new to repeaters, go back a step and just in this playlist, check the previous videos because I covered the repeaters extensively, you know, from like very big beginner type of things to more advanced type of features and how to achieve those. And so you can always find how to do different things. And so as you can see, if I preview what I have so far in this repeater, you might recognize from my previous video, I have some type of different objects here. And imagine that I'm gonna just add random objects to our rows. So I have a few down below and as you can see, it just reuses my template and automatically end up with an endless list of different things. But imagine that we're just gonna display maybe six items per page, right? So what I would do to paginate it, I would just go down and as you can see, there is a pagination option in the corner, one of the last options for the data set in repeater and just click on multiple pages. Now here is the trick. You can define how many objects do you want. As I said, I want six and we start at page one. Boom, that's it. Now you would expect that that's, it's all done, but you need to then go ahead and create a pagination component, which is the trickiest bit here. Everything else is automated for you. I'm gonna have to go ahead and just create maybe a couple of arrows and maybe indicators for pages as well if you want to go that crazy. Boom. So I simply created a couple of arrows a page indicator, maybe we can add a variable in to indicate exactly what page a person is on. But you're gonna see that I have six items here and basically another six or so in the next page. Now it's really easy to flip those pages. So let's say if I would go on an arrow and add an interaction like on click event and scroll down to repeater actions, you're gonna see that I have set current page action. I select that. And I can just select my repeater, which I named product grid before. And I can just set it to value, let's say two. And every time I click on an arrow, now it's gonna open up a page two. So let's preview that. You're gonna see how simple that is. Let me just zoom out so you see it at the full extent. As you can see, it's my, let's say product page. I just click on this arrow. Boom, it changed to a next page because I only had the custom values on the first page. And if I would click again, it would still change to the same page because I only told it to go to a specific value, which is page two. Now it depends how complex your prototype is. You might want to go and make it, you know, if a variable at one value plus, so it always goes to next, 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 next. Or you could, you could just keep it fixed basically. If it's only like, you know, just one flip, you need to test it for user and just to see if that's how we expect it to be. Maybe that's enough for you, so you can keep it at that. However, in my case, I want it to be maybe three pages or so. So I'm gonna go ahead to my data set and just check how many things do we have created. I think I created quite a few rows. It's definitely more than 12. And if not, I, I'll just add a couple more values like so. I can maybe just also space out the custom values as you can see so that you can actually see how different the things are, but boom, now I have maybe 20 different repeater options. I can modify it and make custom values as well if I want to, but just to show you what's gonna happen. Boom, we have this page with a grid. I go to second page and it flipped all the things, but now nothing happens. And all I need to do is just basically add a global variable. So if I go to project, global variables, and just add a new variable, which is gonna be, let's say, var pagination. And by default is gonna be number one because it's uh, page number one. And in my on click event on that arrow, I can just go to function here and just do something funky, which is insert variable. So I can insert my pagination variable, which is one and then plus one. Boom, that's about it. 
So, you know, we have it equal to one. And now every time we click, it's going to add one to it. And then it's going to be two. What we can do is also update the value of this variable. So every time we click on it, we can update it with exactly the same statement. So what I'm going to do is add action to our click event and just select a uh, set variable value pagination. And here is where you can do that. So I, I can literally copy the same exact thing I did before, which is pagination plus one. Boom, click OK, drag it before the set current page, because we need to update and then update your thing to do this. So we're one going to update the value of a variable and then set the current page to the new value of our variable, if that makes sense. And if I preview, you're now going to have be able to flip through all the pages. As you can see, I went to the last one and, and it just adds the page value and it's easy as that. Now for the back arrow, all I have to do is literally just copy that on click event, paste it. And here, all I need to do is just minus one instead of plus one. That's it. And now it's going to go back as long as I have something in a value. So let me show you how it works. So now theoretically by default, it's not going to go back because it's, it's not there. But let's say if I go forward one page and I go back one page, now I created the working pagination. And as you can see, some of them flip because not all of them are updated, but you can get the drill, right? So now I'm able to paginate back and forth between the pages. Now, the next thing what you could do is to actually show the pagination value in this specific thing, which I have a text field, and I'm going to give it a name, let's say, uh, current page or something like that. So this is our text field. And every time I click these things, I just want to update it. By default, it's probably going to be one. And here I can just add a new action, set text, select current page, this, this text field I just defined. And then instead of text, we set it value to a variable and pagination, click OK. And that should do the trick. Boom. And now, as you can see, we have page one. If I go next, it's page two, next page three, next page four. And then if I go back, it doesn't update. And that's because I didn't put the actual text field, set the text to the, also to the back arrow. So I can just paste it in. And now it's going to work perfectly fine. One, two, three, three, four, one. Boom. Simple pagination in a matter of minutes. Now, I would challenge you to go and explore how to do different paginations. So maybe you have a set of maybe five pages or you detect how many pages there are in a repeater. And then you present like digits one, two, three, four, five. And whenever you click on a specific digit, it just opens that page in the repeater. So I'll leave it up to you. If you are really challenged, let me know in the comments. So I'll make a video on that too. But as per usual, if you enjoyed this video, give a like, subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so, share with your friends who are learning UX prototyping and Axure and all that high fidelity jazz. I really appreciate it. And you know, as per usual, I'll see you next time.